Hello friends, this is Growl. In this series, I start with a brand new character in World of Warcraft. No previous achievements, no gold, no anything. Fresh at max level with no connections to see how far I can go. The one catch, I recorded every single minute of the journey and I explained my thought process and decision making along the way. Whether you're just looking to improve your skills and pug your way up, or you just want to come along for the ride, I hope you guys enjoy. It's finally time. I don't know if you want to call it the zero to hero series or what we're doing but this is going to be some sort of a guided playthrough of the world of warcraft endgame what it's like from a healer's perspective i've been thinking a lot about how i want to do this series and although it would be entertaining to watch me flounder around or maybe try and rush through and you know get some keystone master or whatever achievement as fast as i could i wanted to make this as helpful as possible for the beginner or just you know someone trying to brush up on their skills so what we're going to do is we're going to make a new character we named our character a little bit suspiciously but uh, you know a little bit of a fun crypto name and we're going to give it a boost i thought long and hard about a lot of things um first of all what character i decided to make a shaman i think a shaman is going to be a real good beginner character it is a desired character in most forms of the game and it's also not super difficult to play maybe get into the end game i don't know i don't know what it's going to let us do so first of all we're going to switch to resto spec we're going to try and do a majority of our gameplay as healer you can see my ui is a little bit scuffed i am using a few add-ons here i'll go through my add-on list real quick probably the first half of this video might be some like real ui stuff that will be helpful to some but if you've already you know gone through the wow thing you might be uh, familiar with all this information so the few add-ons i'm going to use i'm using lvui this just reskins a few things like the character panel the world map it's not necessary really but i'm just used to having it and i don't feel like turning it off the add-on for my party frames i'm going to use is voodoo uh, i would highly recommend getting a party frame add-on as a healer that way you have more customization over what's displayed and you know just more features you don't have to use voodoo honestly the ui is kind of ugly i can open it up right now and it looks like it was developed in 15 years ago because it probably was i have details here in the bottom right i'm not going to use this too much but it's nice to check on things just to kind of get a gauge of what's going on this will track the damage the healing uh we can look at death logs and see how like what sort of damage events led to people dying and all that stuff and finally we have bartender i decided not to use uh very many weak ores for this weak ores is a custom modification that lets us you know change around our ui and although there's tons and tons of weak ores that'll be very useful my plan for weak ores for this series is i'm just going to roll them out slowly as we learn more about the game and sort of learn the features that you know the learn the weak ores and the modifications that we want to use we'll add those but for now we'll start real basic let's go over our skills real quick so let's let me open my bartender here and i'll show you my my bar layout Again, I'm not sure if this is what I'm going to do, but I have one bar here in the middle that's going to be my like main rotational abilities. In a while, you have to be looking at these very often, and you don't want to have to drag your eye all the way from your frames to your character to down here for rotational abilities. So anything that's you know has a short cooldown that we need to be using often, I'm going to throw right here in the middle of the screen. Then on the left side of my screen, I have a couple more bars. This is going to be for... Uh, like cooldown abilities things that I'll need to check on but I won't need to look at as often and this is like I'm not sure about this this is not normally where I put them but I'm just going to try this layout out and we can evolve our layout as we go throughout the series and then finally we have this bar in the bottom this is going to be just spells with no cooldown that I never need to look at but I'm still going to have them on my bar and we can hotkey them oh and also I have this bar on my right this mainly will be for clickable stuff if I want to use uh like consumables or whatever but we don't have gold right now so we'll worry about that later with how we do this UI and now there's one um there's one macro I'm going to use this is a macro that you may not be using 
right away it might seem a little bit complicated but i would highly recommend it i thought i have one of these uh okay we're just gonna look for okay so this is called a focus macro and what this is gonna do is allow us to save a target Sorry, these were my old macros when I very first started to sort of playing the game. So what this does is focus targets allow us to save a target for later. So for example, let's say there's a target in the pack that I'm going to want to use my interrupt on, but it's not the same one that I'm going to want to be targeting. So what I can do here, let's say uh, this guy is the target, for example. We click set focus and now this puts his health bar up here. Now we can click on other stuff, but this guy is always up here. When we press our focus button, we'll, uh, we'll be able to kick that with this macro. Again, it might seem a little bit uh, overwhelming, but you guys will get there, I promise. But that'll be the only macro we use here. That'll be the only macro we use. Bam. Okay, what do we do? What do we do now? So I'm 148 item level. One thing that you'll learn when you're starting out in WoW and you're gearing your guy is that your items don't, like, the specific stats on the items don't really matter too much, especially as a healer. You don't really care that much about your stats and you mainly just care about this number here, the item level, and you want to just get stuff that's higher item level. Adventurer's Foot Locker. Okay, this is gear for other specs. We don't care about that. Actually, what is this? Oh, this gives us 500 gold. Oh, health potions. Okay, this is very good. Forgot these. We're going to bind health potions and our mana potions and our drinks. Okay, so now we found now we found some of the buttons that we didn't remember. So, And we don't have very much gold, so we're going to need to be careful with these. Very nice of them to give us those. Let's test this. Oh, and I forgot my mount. And I forgot my mount. Go there. Bam. All right, we're cooking. We're cooking. Now let's open up our talent window. We'll set up our talents. This is going to be my default build that I'm going to run in almost every key. In the first row, I'm going to play Undulation. Since Healing Surge is going to be most of our healing that we do, and uh, this is going to give a big boost to that. Echo of the Elements is a really strong passive that increases our Cloudburst and our Riptides. Uh, here we can run anything we really want. I'm going to run Static Charge just to give us a little bit more flexibility with stuns. Especially in lower level dungeons when people aren't stopping as much stuff, we might need that. This row I'm going to just run uh, AV just to give people a little bit of HP boost. Especially nice on the tank. Uh, here we can play anything as well. Let's play uh, Graceful Spirit. If you're a little uncomfortable, I know Spirit Walker's Grace can be a weird spell to use. So you could also use Nature's Guardian. Uh, in this row, we're definitely going to play Cloudburst. This looks complicated. Don't really, don't really worry about it too much. You're essentially just pressing it and trying to keep it active. And then lastly, we have Ascendance. So now let's keybind our new Ascendance button. This will be our... I don't think we have any new keybinds, though. Bam. Okay. So this, this might... Again, this UI might be a little bit foreign to me, but it'll be foreign to you guys, too, when you're playing... So realistically, I just want to do some dungeons. I don't care about anything in the game right now. I have mail. Hold on. I have mail. Let me see. You guys won't have a cool mount like me. Okay, so I barely even know my way around town, so you may assume I'm a beginner. So I'm just going to run around in circles so I can find a mailbox. You can actually go like this. I don't know if this is an LVI feature or what. Right click on the map and then go to mailbox. Then it'll actually show the mailboxes on the map. We found one now. I don't know what this mail is, but going through this together. Character boost. Multiple items. Oh, it's giving us a bunch of stuff. Oh, okay. So this sent us this mail because this was all the junk that we had on our guy when he was level 10. And, uh, yeah, so they basically just filled our inventory. Oh, great. Yeah, thanks. Really pretty. Uh, let's see if we can find somebody with a merchant mount. Let's go over to here. Get rid of all this stuff, even though it probably won't be worth very much. They were good. 
Can we queue a dungeon? This is the real question. Can we queue a dungeon? That will be really cool. Uh-oh. Roll unavailable. Oh, wait. Healer. So can we just go right into a dungeon? That's actually really cool. All right, we're going. We're going. We're just we're playing a dungeon here. It's going to let us queue into a dungeon. So essentially, there's four levels of dungeons in WoW. There's normals, heroics, mythics, and mythic plus. Normals and heroics, you can just use the automated queue system. And as long as you're high enough item level, it lets you in. And it'll find you a party. So we'll just walk around town here. Maybe we'll find something to do. I don't know how long these queues are. Wait time, three minutes. Okay. Uh, heroics get a little bit harder, but for the most part, these are very, very beginner dungeons. Some of the mechanics are sort of neutered. There's not as much to do. Um, you know, the mobs aren't too scary. And then mythics will be the ones that'll be a bit scary. So if I were you guys, if I was making a new guy, there's probably some useful stuff we can do. Let's maybe go adventure down that way. Just because we probably should. So the one big thing that I forgot, as a lot of people may be laughing, me, laughing at me right now that I just realized, is covenants. So a big part of WoW is you select to align with one of four different covenants. And I just queued into a dungeon without even picking one. We're gonna... If we... <laughs> we're, we're too tiny, we gotta jump up on this table... All right, so this, we're in queue, but now it says speak with each of the covenants and decide who you want to be with. Necrolord, no. Do I even have to speak with him? Let me see if I can just go over to Kyrian. So right now, the the go-to would be Kyrian. Should I play Kyrian? Maybe I just won't even play Kyrian. So right now, right now the go-to for dungeons for the most part is Kyrian, just because it does some really solid damage. What if we play Night Fae? Let's just play Night Fae. That'll be fun. I don't really care about what's best. I just want to pick something fun. I picked a Volpira as my race. You know, I'm not I'm not a furry or anything, but you know, I just I just wanted to have a tail. And what? And let's just play Night Fae too. We're not you know we're not a show mount. Ooh, that's kind of I'm kind of digging that. All right, let's choose our covenant and let's choose Night Fae. So I don't plan on doing too much like solo content as we uh, in this series. We'll just kind of do it as we go. You know, mostly I just want to talk about dungeons, talk about what it's like being a healer and what sorts of things we should think about and go from there. All right. So we got apparently 250 quests we just completed by talking to this guy or it's a lady Moonberry. All right, this is our new friend here. What's the queue time? Four minutes. Okay, now it says average wait time, four minutes. Okay. Meet Lady Moonberry at the refugee camp. All right, well, we can just knock out some solo quests. I think a lot of people have the wrong mindset about solo quests in WoW. Uh, if you're into the story, that's one thing, but if you aren't into the story, you might not be super excited about doing them. And if that's the case, don't do them, you know, go do something else. For the most part for this series, we'll just kind of mess around and do solo quests while we, you know, queue dungeons or whatever's going on. Honestly, I don't know what the queue is like here in a normal dungeon. It looks like we can't find a tank. I see three DPS, zero tanks. I would imagine that's going to be the case uh, most of the time. This is a simulation for what it's like to be all the way at the very super end game. All right, so here we go. We got our first dungeon. I'm a little nervous. My UI might be messed up. This is my first dungeon ever. My item level is 148. I have no idea what to expect. We'll just figure it out as we go. All right, we're in the Halls of Atonement. All right. So let's see what our tank's doing. First of all, our nameplates don't work, so that's mildly terrifying. They're on now. Check out this guy's gear. He has 87,000 health and he's 236 item level. So I don't really know why he's here, but I think this will be very easy. So we can see our damage meter in the bottom right. He is uh, 
doing the most damage as a tank, which is cool. So our first line of defense heal is going to be our Riptide. This is something that we essentially want to spend on cooldown. Not only does it do a nice initial heal, but it uh, leaves a heal over time. And it also boosts our other spells. On top of that, we're going to be keeping Earth Shield on our tank. When a party member's frame changes color here with Voodoo, it means that they have some sort of dispellable debuff there. That's a debuff that just does damage when it ends, so we're not too worried about it. If everyone's at full health, we want to make sure to use our damage buttons. It's not super important as we're starting off, but just something that... It's going to be a habit that I have, and I'm going to do it automatically without thinking. So, for whatever reason, we got put into a dungeon with this guy who's, like, very, very high level. So, he's just mostly going to be slamming stuff. So, to get from pack to pack, you can always mount. Mounting is going to be faster, almost always, for in walking. Because... Mounts are fast, that's what they're for. So in this Dungeon Halls of Atonement, there's three of these shards, if you will. We're going to go to each shard and kill it, and that will activate the first boss. Once we get to the first boss, we're going to just basically go from boss to boss. And I don't know what, what item level these guys are, or what exactly is going on, but these guys are extremely, extremely overgeared for sort of this content so we could basically just be afk the entire key and we'll be fine so i guess we can just talk about some beginner stuff so here we're gonna we'll use our focus idea here see how i do this and then i uh target our target our guy and leave it up there and now i can change targets and do whatever i want anytime we're doing sort of group healing we want to put down our cloud burst just to make sure it sort of echoes the healing that we do Almost any time in Mythic Plus that you're doing healing, you're going to want to have that cloud burst down just for the additional healing. But we can talk about nameplates. So nameplates are the frames, if you will, above enemies' health bars and friendlies' health bars. So I have my nameplates customized in two different ways. My enemy nameplates are a complete new add-on. It's called KUI nameplates. I didn't go over that when I was talking about add-ons, but that was one add-on that I have. I just like the way it looks and is uh, customizable. And my friendly nameplates, I have a function that disables this health bar under their name. This makes it so you can still see their name pretty visibly cleanly, but at the same time, it doesn't take up too much space on my screen. So Earth Shield slowly runs out over the course of when your tank is getting hit. You can see it has nine stacks, now it's eight, and now it's seven. And one of the one of the tasks that we have as a shaman is constantly watching that Earth Shield and just reapplying it on our tank just to make sure he's getting that extra healing. So I use Bloodlust. Bloodlust is a group-wide buff. You can use it once every ten minutes. Certain classes have it. In this group, uh, our hunter could use it, or also I could use it. Generally speaking, it's good to use just whenever you have it, as long as you're fighting some sort of boss or big pack or anything. This guy died very, very quickly. Our 230 item level tank just got some 180 item level ants, which is nice. Rats for him. see what our I don't know if this is necessarily good or bad for the game to have these really high level guys coming down here like in one end if you're a beginner healer and you're just like trying to get some gear and put yourself out there this is probably like a really big sigh of relief you're just like oh man nice like you know I can just kind of chill and nothing can go wrong but also you're kind of robbing yourself from the experience you know we've just been talking and doing whatever this whole key but one thing in WoW that you'll have to pay attention to a lot is pulling other stuff and being careful not to pull stuff. You can see there's mobs all around me and most experienced dungeon players kind of pay attention to mobs and try not to pull extra stuff. But, you know, I'm a beginner healer so I wasn't really sure what's going on. I just pulled these birds anyway as an accident. If you ever pull stuff on accident, it's not the end of the world, although you should do your best to try and make sure that you don't do that. 
In early levels, when you're just learning, these mobs won't hurt you too bad, even though you're a healer, but as you go higher and higher, it's going to be really bad if you're pulling mobs. Now we're on the second boss. I'm expecting some sort of like window somewhere that shows our progress in the dungeon, but maybe that isn't a thing in normal, but either way, so each in normal and heroic and mythic difficulty, each boss is gonna drop some loot, and some of the mobs will even drop loot. However, once you get to the end game difficulty, which is mythic plus, it will uh uh, none of the bosses will drop loot, and instead you'll get the loot at the end of the dungeon. So you can see there was some stuff going on there. We got lots of complicated mechanics, but luckily our team just kills the boss very quickly. And, uh, we weren't punished too bad for not doing the mechanic properly. And we got a chest as our reward. This is a very big item level upgrade. We're 184. One eighty four. We're not one eighty four, but our chest is one eighty four. And I don't know. I don't know what the experience is like. If this is very common, if we're gonna get, uh, you know, this is maybe some. Maybe he's farming something. Maybe he's farming some sort of like renown or uh, augment wounds. There's various reasons why it, a high level tank might be incentivized to be doing this stuff. But either way, not gonna complain. So besides Riptide, now no one in this dungeon has really needed any sort of big healing, but our two big healing buttons are going to be Healing Surge here, or Healing Wave here. Why is Ascendance there? Just notice that. <laughs> you guys are probably bugging out. So those are our two healing buttons. Generally speaking, Healing Surge is a little bit better healing-wise, but it is costs more mana. So we have to be careful not to use Healing Surge when we know we're going to run low on mana. But for the most part, you'll just find me using Healing Surge in dungeons. I also just learned that I don't have a visible mana bar on the screen. These are the things you learn when you're testing out a new UI. So we'll, we'll maybe find a way to put our mana on there in a sec. But I'm not super worried about that for now. So we're nearing the end of the dungeon. This is the last mini boss. I'm not going to talk too much about individual dungeon mechanics until we get to the point of, you know, where the mechanics will actually hurt us if we fail them. For now, we'll just talk about our character. Talk about what we're doing. So you notice most of my damage dealing that I'm doing is I'm applying Flame Shock to the important targets. And then when Lava Burst is up, I'm using Lava Burst. And that's going to be the bulk of your damage as a healer. You know, it's not super important. It's not a big... Uh, element of your character, but it's there. Something that you do want to do, like for instance, when everyone's full health. Let's see. Oh no, we got hit by the statue. It's okay, it's a normal dungeon. It won't hurt us. Messing up mechanics in normal dungeons is fine. So this boss moves pillars everywhere, and you gotta stand in line of the pillars see that our tank kind of a lot of times it can be the tank's responsibility to do that but you know we should always be ready to do dungeons so i got one renown am i renowned two now i am so once you reach the end of the dungeon if we're uh queuing for something you can simply just right click on your name and go to leave instance group and it'll port you back to I believe we should have access to all the dungeons by now. Okay, so our party frames and some of our add-ons might not be super efficient at dealing with normal dungeons. Uh, I just don't really play them that often since the beginning of the expansion, so not really sure what to expect. This is very unfortunate that we didn't skip the campaign, but whatever. But let's just keep queuing for dungeons. Our goal is to be the best dungeon healer that we can be. The best advice that I can give you when you're starting off is just get out there. Just put yourself out there, keep queuing, keep going in parties, keep playing dungeons, keep doing your thing, and over time you'll learn. You know, WoW is a game that experience is very important, and it can be intimidating when you're not, you know, super experienced and you're just learning, but there's only one way to learn, right? And it's not going to be to 
you know, study and do all that funky stuff. You just gotta play out there. Just gotta keep grinding. We got, we have a bag. Use anima into your covenants reservoir. So anima is something for end game, like cosmetic progression, if you will. It's not something that is really that important with your character power. So it's something that's nice to collect and you can throw it in your covenant thing once. This, however, filled with gold and augment runes is pretty sweet. Wow, we got 900 gold and three augment runes just for doing that dungeon. That was crazy. That's a lot of gold that we just got for doing basically nothing. Doing dungeons is pretty sweet. Skip. No way it's going to let us skip. Alright, well we got another dungeon. Got another dungeon. Hopefully it's like a real, uh, a real dungeon that we can heal and not just getting carried by a rando tank. Well, I guess I'm not going to complain. I love how consistent the queue is. This will be like this forever. The DPS have to sit in queue forever because they're the most common. The tank finally shows up and the DPS are AFK. Oh, so now we are in the Necrotic Wake. Oh no, did I just do something weird? I may have just done something weird with what I just did. So if you ever don't know what's going on, what you can do is you can click that little Q button in the bottom right and go teleport to dungeon. So now we're here. Okay, looks like our this team looks much more clueless than the last team did. So hopefully, <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, this is great. This is just what we want here. So all of the mobs are hitting our mage. You can see that on my frames, it highlights who has aggro of some of the mobs with this little red outline. Uh, your frames may or may not do that, but it sometimes can be useful to know. Okay, so here we go. Our tank is just... Where's our tank going? Nope, okay, he's, <laughs> he's coming back. Alright, so again, as a first line of defense, I am using my Riptide. Anytime someone's taking damage, I'm just going to use Riptide on them. And then I sort of go from there. If I need to do more healing than Riptide, I'm going to put down my Cloudburst Totem, and then I'm going to start using my Healing Surges. If I don't need to do more healing, then I'm just going to start using some of my DPS abilities. This pack looks a little bit scary, so maybe let's put down a Healing Rain. Even though there's no healing to do now, maybe this will save us some time later. We'll use our bloodlust since this is the first boss. That looks really scary, so we're gonna get out of the way. These little wormy guys are gonna chase us. And I don't know a whole lot what's going on, you know, we're just damaging the boss and doing healing. I don't know if this is like the typical, I guess maybe we can look at our party's item level. Okay, so we did the thing I told you guys not to do. Where we pulled this stuff. But... Are. So initially this group was being a little bit suspicious, but they seem to have everything under control. They're even using the weapons on the mini boss. So this dungeon has these weapons that are littered throughout the dungeon that you can use on ideally the bosses to help kill them faster. And they, they used one of the good weapons on this boss. So some of them may know what's going on. This boss died very quickly. Okay, let's, let's inspect some of our teammates. What's going on here? This guy is 80 item level. This guy is 105. This guy is 120. I'm the highest item level here. These guys are all night. Oh, these guys are all leveling. Okay, this makes sense. So I guess when you're when you're level 60, if you're queuing normal dungeons, it'll just put you into dungeons where people are leveling. It'll scale everything accordingly. 
So you can also, while you're doing normal dungeons, be paired with people that are leveling. Okay, so we're pulling a lot of monsters. We're looking at our important buttons to press. Let's press Healing Tide. We clicked it because we don't remember what our hotkeys are. As sort of a preemptive, like, oh no move. We'll put down a healing rain too, since that seems like a good idea to do. Generally speaking, you have to be careful with random teammates just placing healing rain willy nilly, because generally speaking, they don't stand in it, but we decided to do it there. I don't know if this is going to be a common theme that all of our. Uh, All of our groups are just going to be people that know what's going on and are using stuff. Okay, so this this guy over here is casting spells. We're going to click on him and interrupt him. That seems like a good idea. And use the sentence again too. Generally speaking, if anything catches you off guard and you don't know what's happening, press ascendance. Push your healing and you can sort of figure it out later. It's actually so weird going through dungeons and looting stuff. I'm not used to being able to loot mobs, but honestly, I feel like it makes dungeons way more fun if you're looting stuff. Maybe they should add loot to Mythic Plus. It's like random, random stuff that drops. This is a pretty advanced mechanic. We were ready for this one, but these little arrows are like cleavers that get thrown at you. And you sort of have to try and aim it so that the cleavers go into other mobs. But again, with this difficulty, not super important. You can see some of, they seem to kind of know what they're doing here. They seem to kind of know what's going on. And we're slamming. We're uh, two packs and two bosses away from the end already. I don't know if this is because this is a leveling dungeon or because these guys own or what, but it seems to be going pretty smooth. <laughs> and we're not worrying about damage too much. Keeping Earth Shield on the tank, Riptide on the tank. Yeah, this stuff is dying really, really quick. At first I was looking at the amount of damage they were doing and I was thinking that wasn't particularly high, but considering all these guys are like level 50 or whatever, you guys probably know what's going Now we have what might look like the third boss, but actually the third boss is up here. And we have to use this big guy to hook the boss down. Notice one good thing to look at is the debuffs that's on every single party member, right? I can kind of see that they have something. I might not know what this does right away, although it seems like I can mouse over it and read it, which is... Oh man, this is I'm scared. I don't know what to do. A noob in a normal dungeon. Looks like the the issue resolved itself. Okay, that's a swirly. We'll walk out of it. Seems like a good thing to do. Yeah, that guy got deleted. Yo, where's my loot? Maybe we'll, maybe we'll get a good ring from the last boss or something. Getting ready. He drink like a potion or a guardian elixir. Is this guy like a, this guy is right from TBC? He's drinking guardian elixirs. Let's use bloodlust since this is the last boss anyway. 
Yeah, they they know what's going on. They they absolutely know. What's going on. It's a mechanic where oh okay maybe they don't maybe they don't know what's going on. Well, we have this hammer too. Let's use it. We did it. We did two dungeons. I don't feel very accomplished. Oh, we got legs. All right, I feel a little more accomplished at this point. Now that we got legs, I feel more accomplished. We got a legs and we got chest. Vincent's group, and we're chilling. We've gained four item levels today. Thanks for watching. I hope you all enjoyed the video. I'll be releasing regular episodes, so make sure you subscribe to my channel if you aren't already, and click the bell to get notified when the next episode is out. I also come out with regular guides for healers in World of Warcraft, as well as videos explaining UI and all other sorts of things. If you enjoy content like this, I'd also highly recommend coming to check out my stream at twitch.tv yummytv where we're always gaming there. The link is in the description, and happy keying.